Yeah, uh, thank you for a uh, pretty kind introduction. Uh, I'm fully aware that I'm the only thing that's uh, standing between you and the coffee break, so I will try to go over the time. Uh, what I want to talk about is uh, a model for an analysis which we did on the Christianization of the Roman Empire. Uh, and we tried to approach it as a, uh, as a transmission of the innovative theory ideas. Take Christianity as a basically a religious innovation, and then we uh, we try to try to model how this innovation spread throughout uh, the uh, area of the Roman Empire. Uh, the basic idea of the, uh, behind our models is that the transmission of ideas or especially innovations uh, in the ancient world is much more constrained by the physical travel of people than it is uh, today. Of course, there were, there were ways of communication, of fast communication by letters and whatnot. But if you want to uh, introduce somebody to a new idea or convince him, then you need to travel somewhere and talk to him physically. No telephones, no uh, And to try to evaluate factors which could play a role in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a such a Inclusive uh, uh, process. Uh, these are the either uh, distance from a Jerusalem as a, as a point of uh, origin, the population size of particular uh, settlements, and the structure of the, of the network uh, of the travel network. Uh, we are already building our analysis on previous models. So, for the transportation network or transportation model, uh, we take uh, the orbits uh, done by, done by uh, Cradle and his colleague, uh, colleagues in Stanford, which combines the road network and the model of the maritime uh, uh, travels and uh, allows for uh, estimation of uh, not only distance but also time taken or, uh, and what's most interesting for us, the cost takes one to transport from A to B. Uh, we also have data on uh, or estimations on uh, population size of particular settlements, uh, which are different from the from, uh, from start. And uh, we, we compare our models uh, against, against the archaeological evidence or historical evidence uh, on the first appearance of uh, Christian communities or churches. Uh, from uh, from the class of uh, these people, uh, we match all these uh, all these data to the uh, sites uh, of of Orbis so that we get everything nicely uh, nicely together. Uh, so now uh, of pictures. This is how the transport model looks like. You can see that uh, uh, there's the roads and also some uh, estimated uh, maritime routes. Uh, this is the uh, spatial distribution of uh, the population, population estimates. Uh, I'm really glad that we are moved to this room because it's much uh, better than yesterday. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, this is a logarithmic scale or logarithmic, logarithmic color. So you can see that you have these very dark uh, cities in the millions, such as Rome, Cartago, Alexandria, and so on. And uh, but also some very small settlements in the order of uh, about 1,000 people. Uh, uh, and this is the uh, spatial distribution of the uh, Christian communities. Uh, red are the first, uh, are the communities in the first year, one, 100 uh, uh, after Christ. Uh, blue are the, uh, uh, the second. So, you can take a second leg in the year 200, and black are all uh, of the communities in year uh, 300. So, uh, what we, uh, uh, how we how we combine uh, the uh, travel travel costs or uh, the transportation with the with population sizes is uh, via the so-called uh, gravity law. 
uh, which allows us to estimate uh, the volume of intercity interaction. Uh, it's it's quite uh, heavily used in economics and for transportation only nowadays. So we think it's uh, we, uh, enough so we can apply it to the history of data. And it's taking uh, to, uh, to the normal uh, gravity uh, in the form, but not in the interpretation, obviously. So uh, it's directly pro proportional uh, to the sizes of the, of the two populations. So if I want to estimate uh, the amount of interaction between two cities, uh, I multiply the, uh, their populations and divide it by, uh, by the distance. Uh, it has uh, basically just this parameter, the raw, uh, which is usually set to one or two. In literature, there is no uh, agreement in what uh, was better. Uh, we tried both, and it works all the same. So it doesn't really matter, fortunately. <coughs> so uh, this is the spatial distribution of the uh, gravity towards Jerusalem. That means the amount of interaction the particle site is supposed to have with Jerusalem. You can see that. Uh, for smaller sites, it's uh, spatially close, but we, we can see that there are some sites with, uh, if you recall, uh, the distribution of the population sizes, which are exactly those large cities uh, which also have uh, significant uh, gravity, even though they are quite distant. Um, we have also tried to uh, um, First, we all with just this technical, uh, um, let's say, parameters. We are going in a, in a, in a diffusion or time in the process. Um, and we, we, has, we can see uh, in, the, in the results that uh, if we take just the population estimate or just the cost uh, towards the share result, uh, the, the correlation with the, the standardization or the explanation of the data is not so good as if we uh, incorporate, uh, as we combine these two in, in the gravity. Um, already here, I'll, uh, I'll note that uh, the third column of the, the late crystallization uh, does not really play well with us. Um, but in the, in the first two waves, you can see that we are uh, nicely explaining uh, the distribution. So, we have uh, really quite motivated with this. And we uh, uh, started trying to do some, uh, some uh, dynamical model. And uh, although this is complicated, it's just a very simple diffusion model. Uh, original from epidemiology, where uh, the nodes can be in two states. Either they are they have accepted to the area or the disease or whatever, uh, or not, and it spreads. Uh, it can spread only to the direct and uh, direct neighbors. Mm. Um, you can you can either respect or ignore the travel costs. Uh, this is clearly not uh, realistic because uh, if you put this model on the on the on the travel network, then you can spread the idea only if uh, all the nodes on the route are let's say infected. Okay, so you can see from the spatial distribution, it completely uh, uh, ignores uh, uh, the the large cities which are supposed to be Christianized in the first wave and just uh, goes from the uh, distance. So, if a, although the model is uh, simple, but with, the, with the complex modeling, we can just model the distance from the Jerusalem. That's a bummer. So, let's, uh, uh, and you can see here that also the correlation is quite low and, and the difference with these, let's ignore this one. Too. I will talk about this later, but uh, the difference between these two is not so 
reasonable. It's, yeah, it's not a good time. Good time. So let's try better. And let's do it. Let's do a diffusion process with respect for full uh, uh, the gravity, not just the turbulent. Um, there are two many ways how to do this. All those ways uh, have a lot of parameters, uh, which can cause some headaches. So we avoided that. And instead, we have analyzed uh, the, the network uh, in terms of so called effective distance. Uh, the effective distance uh, allows us to relate the flow is uh, for the estimated flow in the network, in our case, uh, the gravity or the uh, estimated uh, interaction between the cities, uh, and uh, the first arrival of some uh, spreading process. Uh, it is uh, initially from, uh, it was introduced in a study of uh, epidemiology or uh, epidemics or pandemics, and uh, it's uh, actually very simple. Uh, it takes a fractional outflow of the node, that means how probable uh, particular, particular uh, neighbors of the node on, on the gravity on network are to catch the disease from the particular node and takes this as, as, the, as, as the distance. So the distances are now probabilities of transmission from node A to node B. Uh, and what they have shown for, for, for diseases is that uh, the screening process should arrive to the nodes proportionally uh, to the effective distance. So this is how the uh, network uh, looks when we uh, take the shortest path tree from Jerusalem to the rest of the rest of the network, and you can see it's promising that the uh, large uh, cities are connected directly, which means that there is direct transmission from Jerusalem to the east, and from those it spreads further away. Uh, so this was like spatial distribution. Uh, we can, but we can also uh, uh, transform this plot uh, by scaling by the distance. So that means that this is Jerusalem, and the closer the nodes are to, to the to Jerusalem the sooner they should uh, catch the spreading process. Okay? So you can see here the nice circle, the, the yellow circle, are the nodes uh, which are Christianized in the first century. The blue, blue nodes are those which uh, are supposed to be uh, Christianized in, in, the, in the second century. And again, uh, we have the problem with the uh, Christianization in the first century, which is all over the place. Hmm, that's a bummer. Uh, so, uh, here uh, is a similar uh, distribution as previously, where uh, on the y axis is the uh, distance from Jerusalem. You can see that you can very nicely uh, distinguish between the first and the second wave, but we have a problem with the third wave again. Um, so, uh, to conclude, uh, we can suggest that uh, both the uh, intercity distance, or general cost, uh, and population size had a uh, large influence on spreading religious innovations and probably also other uh, innovations. Uh, however, uh, the low spatial temporal continuity of the, data, of the uh, data set we are comparing against um, is, a, is, a, is a main issue of this, of this study. Uh, so the question is if this uh, means that the spreading was done in the waves instead of a continuous spreading process, that would explain that we would hit only some of the close, uh, some of the close uh, cities, but not all, and those which are not hit, but in the particular wave, maybe a generation of people, would be Christianized later, or there may be some uh, specific friction uh, to the, the flow of ideas or so people between particular sites which we are not incorporating based on cultural or other uh, variables. 
uh, or you just may have uh, incomplete events. Okay, for, for, particular, for some for some of the cities which we are we have been against Christianization in the latest right or the latest time, then might be some communities present before, but you don't have the recollection to data. Uh, or there's something else if there is suggestions I really don't on that. So uh, thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, please.